we lived it 24-7, pink peg pants, black and white shoes, hair this high, and wouldn't back down. And we didn't understand why everyone just didn't, let us do what we want to do, leave us alone, we're not bothering anybody, and, you know, it caused the riot everywhere. I love it. Hey, welcome to your Uncle Joe's Garage, supported by Mike Thompson RV. Special guest today, let me move up a little bit closer here. We got a drummer in the room, Slim hey, Jim Joe. Phantom. Welcome. Nice to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here. a long time. It's, yeah, we go, we actually go back further than you realize. But first off, though, we're in the garage. The question is always, what was your first car? My first car was a 66 Pontiac Bonneville. Bonneville, good Which lord. Which we had all the stray cats and all the equipment with the bass sticking out the back, yeah. us across the front seat <laughs> like uh, Elvis Moot. That's really what it was. Oh my god, it was about 75 feet long. Yeah, four Three doors feet. between I think the windshield and the grill was like eight feet. I love it, I love it. Bonneville's the biggest one they made. It should, uh, let's step back here a moment. Oh, this is Stray Cat Struts is the new book. You're probably aware of this. this yeah, is a, it's lately been my taken My life up is a rockabilly uh, rebel. This is one of the best written books I've read. Oh, and thanks, I Joe. love your attitude in it throughout the entire thing. It's just everything about this. This is something you need to read, especially if you like music. And I love, it starts right off with the five rules oh. of rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, face reality. You never heard that from a musician, did you? <laughs> well, after a while, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, show gratitude. I'm happy to be here. 100 years later, playing rockabilly. How about that? Number three, always be with the hottest chick in the room. We'll find somebody in the room. <laughs> always Number four, always wear at least one thing around your waist that has nothing to do with holding your pants up. <laughs> that was the one like, oh my god, that is so key. And continue to listen to and be awed by Elvis Presley's Sun Sessions record. Is that how you got going into Rockabilly, was it? Yeah, that's how I found about Rockabilly. We, um, it, you know, a lot of my stories being kind of accident of birth, I, I went to school with the other two guys in the Stray Cats. We all lived in the same neighborhood and mm -hmm. um, uh, that was we're in the same Island? class. Massapequa on Long Island, yeah, it was like a 45 minute straight shot from Penn Station on the, on the Southern Long Island Railroad. And, um, it, we were the musician guys who had always played. We took lessons at the local store, and everyone knew, knew how to play. Lee and Brian were both like virtuoso guys. Brian was you know, way, way ahead of everyone ever since we were kids. And um, he's always played a whole bunch of instruments, hasn't he? Uh, yeah. Well, mainly guitar, but he's like a really talented guy. Lee too. They were. Um, yeah. Uh, and I was going to go to music college, and like I was happy to have a job in the drum shop if I could work in the city and get out of Massapequa. I was like very, um, I would have been grateful for that. But uh, we we discovered rockabilly music a little bit through, through the back door. Um, it just, uh, I think it was on the jukebox at Max's Kansas City and it was a, a club that we used to go into and try to get you know record contract and hang around with all the cool people. And I knew Elvis Presley was a famous guy on on TV and that, and um, but I didn't know the rockabilly I didn't know that existed, and when I heard it, that's, that's Elvis Presley. Wait a minute, that's Elvis Presley, yes. And like the world stopped spinning for half a minute, and I kind of really knew, knew what to do. But there weren't any rockabilly people around. I mean, I dealt with uh, Robert Gordon in the 70s and yeah. Dave Edmonds and a few others yeah. like that, but they hadn't, you had, didn't cross paths with you. Um, we crossed paths a little. Well, Dave Edmonds wound up being our record yeah, producer, producer, who was like a really important guy in this whole story. Um, Gordon, um, we, we liked Gordon. I think there was one, uh, one gig I think that we went to. He was playing around in the city, and we, um, that was a little bit after we found Elvis, and then very quickly Gene Vincent, Eddie Cochran, and Chuck Berry, and Buddy Holly, and Jerry Lee Lewis, and Carl Perkins especially. Um, um, it was like a tidal wave of cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, um, very, very soon after that, I had, I had long hair, and I was studying jazz, and um, uh, I went into uh, St. Mark's Place, yeah. a place called Hair Power, and just told the girl to cut all my hair off. And she said, well, it's about time. <laughs> and I walked across the street to Trash and Vaudeville, uh -huh. uh, and then to Andy's Cheapies, which was next door, and I bought some baggy pants, some pointy shoes, and a bowling shirt, and I left my old clothes in the, in the, in the dressing room. And the three of us did this, kind of the same thing around the same time. And 
Well, the first time that I saw you guys play was Fridays, was the TV show. Yeah. And you're on that, and you were full on rockabilly at that point. I'd been working with the Blasters out here doing okay. some other guys. said, There's someone from back east. I didn't know. And so and you detail it great here in the book how you went to London mm. and how you interfaced with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards many times uh, later on as well. And well, Bill Wyman, who we've had great fun with Bill, he's got the largest collection of anything you want. Yeah, I, I, I stay in touch with Bill. It's funny, all these other people come and go and like, wow, it's a great story. Bill, I, I stay in touch with and he's, uh, he's great. He's a fantastic character. Yeah, uh, Fridays was kind of a, among the wacky moments in that book. Uh, uh, we had gone to London and were a little bit toast of the town because we were homeless guys and just knocking on doors trying to get a gig and um, we had been kind of going to parties and any place that we thought there'd be some other cool people around and um, so when we finally knocked on enough doors and got a gig four o'clock in the afternoon eighth on the bill at a pub where there was a few faces that we had met that came out to see us like Lemmy, Chrissy Hine, oh Joe Strummer, um, Glenn and Steve from the Sex Pistols and just people who are still my friends to this day um, it, okay, we'll go check these guys out. They're these loudmouth New York guys who've been bumming around town for a few months, mm -hmm. and we could play, and we were good at the act, and we 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 really nailed it, and we had a built-in story. The fact that we were still kind of homeless, we were living in you know, squats that were right out of Sid and Nancy, and uh, you know we slept and in you the had park. A, and you had a giant stand-up bass, so you had to take with you every place you went. We, well, we you didn't have to being a drummer. You well, I think it. we all helped carry yeah. it at some point. I think I cursed them a few times I while I was carrying it around. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I'll ever do that. But um, so, uh, so we were built in story. Mm -hmm. And kind of the bottom line was that we were very good at it because in New York, we had been playing four sets a night, five nights a week at just you know, bars around Long Island, little clubs um, that were outside of the norm of the music places because we were still too crazy for it. It was too... Well, late was 70s, no especially where you were at in uh, Long Island over in that general area, that was that was hard rock. Yeah, and... Uh, and you know, here comes a guy with a pompadour and stovepipe pants or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. And we lived it 24-7, pink peg pants, black and white shoes, hair this high, and wouldn't back down. And we didn't understand why everyone just didn't, let us do what we want to do, um, leave us alone, we're not bothering anybody, and, you know, it caused the riot everywhere. I love it. The book is called A Stray Cat Struts, Slim Jim Fenton. My life is a rockabilly rebel. As I say, this is great. This is oh, great reading. You. It's like going to see A Hard Day's Night as opposed to, uh, well, the Dave Clark Five movie. Yeah. It's, this is the real thing in here, great stories. And I was, you also, you said at the beginning, I think in there, you said the one of your main goals was to have your picture in the Zildjian symbol catalog. Yeah. As a drummer, that's like... As a drummer, like, that's... <laughs> and you've been there. Yeah. Okay, you yeah. got it framed on the wall? Um, I've got a copy of the magazine, I think, in the dreaded storage there. I still have the original you know, with the first little ad in there. You going to play any gigs around town? Um, coming up, uh, I'm, I just did one. I, there's going to be a few in November and um, December. Um, I'll announce those ones, but like it's about this book, and I'm trying to get like a regular job and you know stay home a little bit. Yeah, a drummer with a regular job. <laughs> what a pleasure to Thanks, have you here. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for keeping it going. Right. This is a real Thank rock you. and roll legend here. Thank you. Hey, I know that you, yes, you haven't been in the Uncle Joe's garage yet, but I got some good news. We have created a mobile version of the Uncle Joe's garage. Thanks to our friends at Mike Thompson RV Superstores. Like they say, don't miss a moment and don't miss the mobile Uncle Joe's garage coming to location near you.